For my finals, I decided to make a diary about the coronavirus, as it has had an ongoing impact on my family. By the time I came to submit my work, Prime Minister Boris Johnson had been admitted into intensive care with COVID-19, just 14 days after declaring lockdown in the UK. It's been 11 days now since Boris Johnson announced to the UK that we would be going into a lockdown. And I think for a lot of people, it's hard to come to terms with the idea of only going outside for necessities and one bit of exercise a day. I made the decision to come home from university back to Essex to be with my family because I didn't know when I'd see them again and all because all my classes have moved online. My graduation's been postponed and I do feel like my time at university has been cut short. My routine's completely out the window. I don't sleep till about five o'clock in the morning and I don't wake up till about two or three o'clock in the afternoon because it's really hard to adjust to moving back home. I live with my dad who has severe asthma so we don't get to go out as much as maybe we'd like to as a family. Um, my mum works from home so for her it's distracting having my sister and I and my dad back home and before Boris Johnson announced any sort of social distancing in the UK, before people believed that bog roll fortresses and defence by pasta was going to save them, my sister was actually quarantined on a college trip to Goa. So for us as a family, um, the coronavirus storm had been brewing before it hit the UK. For five days, Anna was kept in isolation with her symptomless tutor in a room with other people who were suspected of having the virus. The conditions were poor and our concern was that her and her tutor would catch it whilst being in quarantine. They said it was isolation and what myself, mum and teachers were expecting was for me to be put in my own sort of room because I was suspected of the virus. If I don't have it now, when, I, when I'm in here, I'm going to get it off one of them, like before I even get tested. To start with, it all seemed like there was a high, that there was a hive of activity going on with the MP's office, and they said, "Oh, we'll get in, you know, we'll get in touch with the Foreign Office, and the MP can use his influence there." Blah blah blah. But actually, they took half a day more. or more to do what I'd already done in the first hour or so of finding out that Anna was in quarantine. We were worried about her not only contracting the virus but also contracting I don't know dysentery or something well, because they were it spreading. was they were it was spreading. yeah they were they weren't following all the protocols that were recommended by the government or the World Health Organization in terms of isolation visitors were coming and going really nearly out of the ward so obviously if anybody there was contaminated they were just spreading it out amongst the local populace so this is a diary entry i wrote on day 2 at 7:07 p.m. An anonymous doctor came and told me off for being in the country at all. Why did you come here? You know it's, there's a virus. I was told him, I told him our flights weren't cancelled and that there was no travel ban. We weren't told, oh yeah, like there's travel bans, you can't fly, your flights are cancelled. It was Anna that kept me going because her diaries and sort of stories that she'd tell me when we'd speak just had me laughing. For the first day or two i didn't realize there was a proper toilet so i was weeing in a hole which is fine <laughs> oh yeah and the toilet roll ran out and it's a jolly good bloody thing that <laughs> mum packed a toilet roll in my case like many other travelers anna passed through uk borders with no virus screening if we were all checked when we came home yeah and if we were all checked before we came home this that and the other like there was there would be even like the slightest bit of chance that we could have contained it better it's nearly um, 8 o'clock and we want to do the clapping for the NHS. As a family, Thursday is the highlight of our week, where at 8pm we are able to take part in the national mass appreciation of our NHS and frontline services. Emotional, Mum. Today is the 3rd of April and we just found out that my auntie has also contracted the virus, most likely from my uncle who has had it for the past few days. These are not confirmed cases as they haven't been officially tested. 
it makes you wonder how many people in the UK actually have the virus. Quite daunting. My dad, his symptoms, he started off with mainly just like the cough and then mum took his temperature and he had a temperature and then in the night he said that he would like obviously get the sweats and shivering and then he'd get really like dizzy as well. But now my mum's got it quite like she feels really unwell i think she has like a temperature aches and pains coughing and she's just been in bed all day like not moving so it's quite scary because obviously you see it all over the social media like what's going on and what can happen so obviously me and my sister are a bit worried about everything a lot of students chose to remain with their housemates during the pandemic it's been inspiring to see how creative they've been getting I spoke to one student from a house that turned every room into a different theme bar and despite how much fun she was having, she was concerned about the levels of hygiene. Each person had to make their room into a different themed bar, so we had like an Irish pub, and a Jamaican themed bar and a karaoke room. So people quite often just won't wash their hands when they come in or they may not be social distancing as much as they should have been. We've had to have hand sanitizer and stick it to the wall. So when people come into the house, they, they just do it. Today we received one of the 30 million letters sent to UK households from the Prime Minister. It talked of how we the public must stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. For the first time in a long time, society has forgotten their divisions. As physical borders close, our social barriers have collapsed. As communities come together and individuals dedicate themselves to saving the lives of others, this is an opportunity to reflect on what is important. As we all do our part to overcome a global crisis, in a time of uncertainty when we rely on the kindness of others, it begs the question, how will society be after? Are we forever changed? One for the grandkids. Yeah, let's put it that way, one, one for the grandkids. <laughs>